teams vying for a national championship. Half the field has been eliminated, and we've got our first contest on this Sunday in OKC. Washington and UCLA, UCLA begin semi-final Sunday. If I have to take a pitch to the ribs, I will do it. I will go down with this team. We always find who we are in the midst of a game, in the midst of hardship. Once you make it to the Women's College World Series and you get a taste of it, you want more. Here at the Women's College World Series, you hope you're at your best in the biggest of moments. Our goal is to have one game, or whatever it takes to put ourselves back in that championship game. We just have so much fight. It's gotta give us a chance to get to the next pitch, the next game, and stay together. We are guaranteed a Pac-12 finalist. UCLA and Washington squaring off. The Huskies need to win twice. The Bruins need to win once. We'll have Oklahoma needing one win later today and Alabama needing two in our second contest. The Pac-12 currently in its longest drought hasn't won a title since 2011. Washington seeking its second ever title, their first coming a decade ago. UCLA, the 11-time champions, hasn't won one in nine years. Adam Amin, two-time All-American Amanda Scarborough, Tiffany Green will join us in a moment as well. And here are the Bruins, the 11-time champs, in the same spot a season ago, 2-0 on Sunday, with Rachel Garcia, the player of the year, going, and they couldn't get it done. She's back a year later, and they've got a chance to get back to the finals. Yeah, and it's a Rachel Garcia who's grown up even from last year when she won National Player of the year in the circle and at the plate but this year this season she was named Pac-12 pitcher of the year and also Pac-12 player of the year the only player in the Pac-12 history to do that and then back-to-back -back years where she was named national player of the year you know as a national player of the year you want a chance to play in the finals and compete for a national championship Garcia the anchor of one of the best pitching staffs in the entire country at UCLA in very rarefied air winning those back-to-back -back USA softball collegiate player of the year awards Washington also one of the best pitching staffs in the country they've gone to a pair of All-Americans the last two seasons making the finals a year ago trying to get back to the finals again Taryn Alvello and Gabby Plain teamed up in a big way yesterday and they really support each other two All-Americans who have each other's back they've had it the entire season but it's also happened here in Oklahoma City at the Women's College World Series Gabby Plain the pitcher from Australia spins it lots of movement that moves down but Taryn Alvello has been the one throwing 71 72 miles an hour just pure gas 16 strikeouts last night against Oklahoma State this is probably the toughest one two punch left here 27 combined strikeouts in Washington's two games yesterday and what a day it was on survival Saturday leaving for the hotel around 8 30 in the morning we had a three hour delay during the game they came back at 8 20 for their second game against Oklahoma State winning it in a shutout and then here they are about 12 and a half hours later from the finish of last night. Now it's about 14 hours or so since the finish of their last game. And they got to go right to work against Rachel Garcia. Here's Washington's Capital One starting lineup. And the main pop, the big bat, is in the two hole. Yeah, one player on the Washington team has just about half of their home runs. Morgan Flores with 23 home runs this season and one here in the World Series. Sis Bates will lead things off for the Huskies. On a Saturday night two years ago here in Oklahoma City, Taryn Alvello outdueled Rachel Garcia for a 1 0 win to eliminate the Bruins from the World Series. The Bruins have swept each of the last two regular season series, and now these two teams meet in Oklahoma City once again. UCLA needs one, the Huskies need two. Let's do it on semifinal Sunday. A strike to Sis Bates to start us off. Having an excellent NCAA tournament hitting near 450. Little floater towards short and into left field. A base hit for Bates to get things going. Mrs. Bates runs through the box. 
Good barrel control. It's a pitch that's up in the zone. Just gets her barrel to it, pops it out to the outfield. Textbook slap there by Bates to find a way on. So here's Flores checking out the read, showing the bunt and pulling back, taking a strike and seeing the corners crash. Second team All-American this year, Flores. Missed all of last, or most of last season, beg your pardon, and missed the World Series with a torn ACL. Has come back in a big way for Heather Tarr's group this year. Popped up, the first baseman pack over, and she nearly made what would have been another spectacular catch by a first baseman here at the World Series. We saw a bunch of them last night. Just love the defense that we've seen here yep. in 2019 at the Women's College World Series. Taylor Pack just laid on that one. So close, so good effort. One and two to Flores. These two teams were the Pac-12 co-champions at 20 and four each, but remember that they opened up Pac-12 play against one another. UCLA won two close games and then blew out Washington in a run rule in game three. The Huskies call that the turning point of their season. Flores pops it up, much easier for Pac this time for out number one. Yeah, and Rachel Garcia is a pitcher who in the circle is going to throw 69, 70, 71 miles an hour. She brings a curveball on both sides of the plate because she'll throw it back door and then she'll move her rise ball up in the zone as a chase pitch to be able to expand the strike zone. These are where her strikeouts were against Minnesota versus Arizona. When she went up against Arizona on the right, she used more of that, that rise ball and climbed the ladder for that fourth and fifth strikeout against them. Sammy Reynolds, the freshman, fouls one back. Great run for Reynolds in the NCAA tournament so far. And hit a home run in Washington's 3-1 opening game loss in extra innings to Arizona. And a pitch that Rachel Garcia has developed to make herself a little bit different this year to accompany her curveball and her rise ball is the development of that off-speed drop ball, a pitch that moves down. She's a pitcher who moves the ball up so well with her rise ball, but that, that off-speed drop ball has helped her this year. Reynolds pops it foul one and two. And Adam, what makes her so tough is that she rarely misses over the middle of the plate. When yep. she throws her curveball on both sides, either when it's with a lefty up and she brings it in, she throws it off the plate. If it's her backdoor curveball, she does a good job of missing a little bit on the outside corner. She just doesn't miss that much down the heart. One, two. On the outside corner froze Reynolds. And then this is a pitch haven't even mentioned yet, but she also has a screwball. It's a pitch that will move away from a left-handed hitter. So she not only can bring the outside corner and bend it back in, but she can bend it away from a left-handed hitter. She's not going to throw this pitch a ton, but she will bring it in. And Paige Halstead with a nice frame to get the looking strikeout. Two down for Kaya Gibson, who had one of those spectacular diving plays last night. Been a bit of a rough tournament so far at the plate. A shift in the lineup today for Heather Tarr. Moving Gibson up in the order, mixing Gibson, Atley, and Helm in the middle of the order the last couple of games. Garcia, a chance to get out of this first inning with no damage. Rachel Garcia, again, was in this spot a season ago. 2-0, was rolling, had 30 strikeouts on Thursday and Friday night combined, cruised into Sunday, gave up the big Elizabeth Mason home run in the sixth inning of the first game against FSU, and then the Knowles went after her in the second. Garcia off to a rock solid start. Um, 
a pair of strikeouts to close out this first inning. I mentioned that off-speed drop ball. This is it. I think you're going to see this pitch a lot today. Gets Gibson to chase it. The pair of strikeouts for UCLA and the offense for the Bruins will come to bat against the Huskies. All part of the Capital One starting lineups. UCLA, one of the top five offenses in the country, and they've got balance everywhere. Yeah, they've not just been re been relying on one player here. Nine different players have scored here in Oklahoma City, and seven different players have RBIs. And three different players have hit home runs. Including Malia Quarles, who gets the start at the DP spot Ooh. today. She had the go-ahead home run against Arizona. This is the showing of the balance and you see Brianna Tautalafua the only UCLA Bruin without a hit remember she's got a ton of experience in the World Series including hitting a home run a couple of seasons ago on this big stage they'll go up against a familiar foe Gabby Plain now a sophomore the only loss in her NCAA tournament career came in game one of the champ series against Florida State last year. And a .72 ERA in the NCAA tournament. <laughs> I mean, that is like wow numbers. She'll face Bubba Nichols, who's had a hot bat in the postseason. And therefore a strike to the All-American. Nichols opened up UCLA's offense at the World Series with a home run on Thursday against Minnesota. First Bruin to ever open up the UCLA offense at the World Series with a home run in their 29 appearances. And you would think with all their history here that hey, maybe somebody's that running into one right <laughs> before with all the amazing players who have run through this program and their experience here in the Women's College World Series. Bubba's name is Madeline. Bubba was a handle given to her by her dad, who was her coach. Needed to separate his daughter because there were too many Madelines on the team. And Bubba pulls one foul towards her own dugout. This is that home run that you were talking about, Adam, to start off the Women's College World Series for UCLA off of Amber Pfizer. That was an inside pitch. I mean, that was even a little bit off the plate, and she was able to get her hands to it to create a spark for this UCLA team that they've just been riding the past couple of games. Plains 0-2, skips in. Nichols and Jordan have had a really impressive run at the top of this UCLA order. The Perez sandwiched between them. Gabby playing on the outside corner for called strike three and the sophomore off to a solid start. Mentioned it earlier, but Gabby Plain has a lot of movement. She's not going to blow you away with velocity. Can spin the rise ball up in the zone, the curveball away from these hitters, and also go-to pitch, that drop ball that she can move down and create a lot of ground ball outs. The, right, the red are the righty-handed strikeouts. The blue are the left-handed strikeouts. All those strikeouts, she really works off the plate, does not miss much. Here is Brianna Perez with the corners playing in. And you have two pitchers in this game, two All-American pitchers going head to head that don't make that many mistakes. So as a hitter, if you see one that looks like it's coming in as a mistake, you have to be able to capitalize it, capitalize on it, because you're not going to get very many opportunities. outside and it's one and one on Perez there's one for seven this weekend but a strong NCAA tournament for Perez the second leading hitter for the Bruins in the postseason behind their nine hitter Kelly Gooden who's been good all year flipped foul One, two. 
Gabby Plain, the sophomore from Australia, talked about her nerves a little bit on this stage, yet you wouldn't have been able to tell that loss she took against Florida State in such a tight game that could have gone either way in a 1-0 contest. Pitched dynamically last year at the World Series. Said she was much more comfortable this season. 2-2. Got Perez swinging. Back-to-back -back K's to start the day. Let's take a look at today's keys to the game. They're presented to us by Dick's Sporting Goods. And for Washington, it's going to be to find that timely hit. You can say that about every team, but specifically for Washington, they've not been great with runners in scoring position at the Women's College World Series. And then for UCLA, continue to have quality at bats, one through nine. Everybody getting in on the action. Going to be important for them to string some things together against Plain. Here is Aliyah Jordan. I mean, you saw what this UCLA offense has done at the Women's College yeah. World Series. And two, one thing that's flown under the radar is just how patient that they've been at times yeah. to be able to find a way on base, seven walks in two games, a lot of free passes that they've been utilizing. Six of those came against Amber Pfizer, a pitcher that didn't walk very many to begin with. Leah Jordan ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. She's got a couple of home runs in this postseason. And it's been Nichols and Jordan really doing it in the one and three spots, providing most of the punch. And still hits from all over the lineup. Player of the year on deck in Garcia. And clean behind three and up. And a four pitch walk to Jordan. Yeah, and I want to correct myself really quickly because I think that drawing the walk has been a big part of UCLA's game. They've had 11 walks before this one. That would be the 12th with Jordan running down to first base because the way that they have been so patient at the plate, just putting so much pressure on a pitcher to come through the zone is a big part of their offensive game. Kelly Inoy Perez. Preaching balance, preaching quality ABs. Here's Rachel Garcia. Did not allow an earned run against the Huskies in her two outings, two main outings, and then hit two home runs during that three game sweep. Game one, they actually, the Huskies intentionally walked. Rachel Garcia because they knew how dangerous she was. It was actually Taylor Pack in the on deck circle who came up clutch with the bases clearing double to give UCLA the win in game one. But one of those two home runs that Garcia hit came off of Gabby Plain in game two against Washington. It was the go ahead home run in extra innings for a four to two win and that was a game that Garcia closed out with five innings of strong relief for the victory. And it'll be an early visit for Lance Glasso, the pitching coach for Washington here, as Gabby Plain has thrown six straight out of the zone after back-to-back -back strikeouts to start the day. Great history between UCLA and Washington. Naturally, you're going to get that when you're a conference rival to one another. The recent history especially, six straight wins for UCLA since losing to Washington at the World Series in that Saturday night elimination game two seasons ago. There's families on both sides of this rivalry. There's championships on both sides as well. 2-0 to Garcia. There is Taryn Alvello. We expected to see Alvelo at some point today. If Washington won this game, we figured we'd see Alvelo at some point. We figured we may see her today in this game at some point. Big cut by Garcia, and it's two and two. Yeah, and Adam, in an elimination game, it's all hands on deck. Absolutely. And quickly, too, making changes pretty fast.
Garcia homered off of Alvelo in that blowout game three win as well against Washington in March. Just missed close pitch and it's three and two. Ooh. And against the National Player of the Year, I want that pitch to be called for a looking K. Drop ball in the outside corner, just missed, maybe a little bit low. Jordan at first, the payoff pitch to the Player of the Year from Plain. Driven foul. These are the types of matchups you buy a ticket for. One of the great two-way players in the country against one of the great pitchers. And there's another great pitcher who's getting an early trip to the bullpen right now for Washington in this elimination contest for the Huskies. Another payoff to Garcia. Right down the middle for called strike three. Gabby Plain battles back to strike out the side. Two looking strikeouts to start out the first inning for Gabby Plain, taking down Bubba Nichols and then Bree Perez, and then striking out the National Player of the Year and Rachel Garcia. What a start for Gabby Plain and the Huskies. There's a quiet about Rachel Garcia that you can certainly appreciate, but there's a whole lot more to the player of the year. For more, we go to Tiffany Green. Yeah, it's been quite a week for Rachel Garcia. This past week, she was surrounded by her teammates as she picked up her second consecutive USA Softball National Player of the Year award. Now, she's gotten a lot of accolades throughout her career, but she told me that this one was extra special because she dedicated it to her grandpa, Bob, who she calls Papa. She lost him earlier in the season as he passed away, and the two were very, very close. She said she played this entire season for him, and each time she steps onto the field, you may see Papa written on her visor to remember him. There's depth to this young lady, which maybe doesn't always come out in an interview. She's very humble, talks more about her teammates than she does about herself. But there is a lot driving this junior from California. She tries to get UCLA to a place where, there has, where this historic program hasn't been in nine years. 11-time champs, more than any other team that's ever played this sport at the Division I level, yet they have not been to the finals in nearly a decade. Garcia is trying to get them there, something she failed to do a season ago when they needed one win against Florida State. Taryn Atley behind in the count. And again, the championship series begins tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern time live on ESPN. For more information on the 2019 Women's College World Series, you can log on to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. One and one on Taryn Atley. And you mentioned this before, Adam, but just how stoic and consistent that Garcia is yeah. in the circle with her emotions. She doesn't show a ton of emotions. Now, at the Women's College World Series, we've seen a few more come out, but that's to be expected here on this field. But she admitted, I mean, she she does get nervous. She, she feels those same nerves that all the other players who step on this field and actually feel inside their belly, too. She has a great way of controlling it because on the outside, looking in, you can't really tell. 2-1. Atley lines it to left. Good read by the all-Pac-12 defensive selection, Kelly Gooden, the freshman. Atley's been seeing the ball well yeah. at the Women's College World Series. Kelly Gooden out in left field, sees this ball in the air and recognizes it immediately that she needs to break towards that left center field gap. One down for Emma Helm. Big cut from Helm. Big club ball for Washington's pitching coach, Lance Glasso. Helm, a big role player. A season ago for this group. 
Ended up playing a much bigger role than maybe expected after the Flores injury last season, but Helm has continued to have a solid run. Especially late in the year. Trying to get going this weekend, though. Just one for ten at the Women's College World Series. Another big cut, not afraid to swing. Two balls and two strikes. Helm has one of the eight home runs for Washington at the women's college, or in the NCAA tournament, beg your pardon. Five of them belong to Flores, but still eight home runs pumped out by the Huskies. Full count. Um, Emma Helm. Just a lot has been made about Washington's quote unquote lack of power and that's relative to the rest of the field just because it's been such a big home run here Huskies not known for that but they've only hit one fewer home run than UCLA in the NCAA tournament. Three two late on that swing and Helm goes down third K for Rachel Garcia. Yeah, Rachel Garcia cuts this curveball not only in, but it even moves a little bit down. Backdoor curveball catches the outside part of the plate. And Emma Helms like, do I swing? Is it going to be off the plate? And then it breaks back across the corner, and she's just too late to make a decision. There's Madison Husky. California native. Didn't end up at UCLA, ended up at Washington. Said it was a great fit for her. The name just happened to be a nice coincidence. One, one. And a couple of throws at 69 miles an hour from Garcia in the early going. There's a strike two and two and a chance for another K for Garcia. It's been one of the top strikeout pitchers in the tournament so far. Oof. 68 coming in on the hands that time. UCLA needing one win, Washington needing two. Oklahoma needs one win later today to advance to another champ series. Alabama needs two against the Sooners. Three and two. Mostly tight competitive games. Three of the four on Survival Saturday were within a couple of runs. The payoff to Husky. Tag applied by Halstead and back to back K's to end each of the first two frames for Rachel Garcia. Bruins coming up. Lori and Langenfeld, plenty of names that trickled down from championships past, but 2009 for Washington, 2010 for UCLA, and the last title for the winningest conference in the history of the Women's College World Series was back in 2011 when Arizona State won it. They've had at least one Pac-12 team in the finals 30 of 38 years, but they'd gone for about a seven-year stretch without one until Washington made it back last year as the first finalist in seven seasons. Now they seek their first title as a conference for the first time in eight years. And asking the question, is the Pac back? They certainly are in terms of talent. They certainly are in terms of depth. But can they do it with titles again as they did for so many years? There's Taylor Pack leading it off for UCLA in the bottom of the second. Well, I, I personally think about the Pac-12 as of recently and think about how good their pitching is. Yeah. Seems like there's an All-American and maybe even multiple All-Americans on every team. And even go back to last year with Oregon, with Megan Kleist, Miranda Ellish, they were growing much more depth within the Pac-12 mm -hmm. because of the strength of Oregon. Pack with a base hit into center field. 
A leadoff single for the Bruins here in the bottom of the second. I wonder if Pack still remembers that moment when they loaded the bases intentionally by walking Rachel Garcia in the late innings to pitch to Pack, and Pack made plain in the Huskies' pay in that first game back in March. Speaking of coming through clutch, Malia Quarles getting the start for the first time at the Women's College World Series in her career. A big moment the other day, Tiff, from Malia Quarles. Yeah, she's definitely a feel-good story because everyone really cheers for her on her team, given the fact that she was able to step into that moment. She said she's been practicing big shots, that one shot, <laughs> all season long. She said, I was just going to swing as hard as I could, and she was able to deliver that big bomb over Arizona. But she's really embraced that role of her eight pinch hits this season. Three of them have been for home runs. 11 of 16 coming from that pinch hitting position for runs batted in. She has really embraced that role. Her mindset, though, she says, I feel invincible when I'm at the plate. <laughs> That's awesome. That one gets away from the catcher, Flores. And Pack will take second base on a wild pitch. It's a nice read by Taylor Pack to be able to see that ball down and test Morgan Flores to see if she'd be able to get to it fast enough and have a good enough arm to be able to throw her out at second base. Taylor Pack sees it down, turns her hips, heads on into second base, easily putting herself in a scoring position. One and two on Quarles. Big cut and Plain retires her for the first out of the second. Gabby Plain gets Quarles to chase this rise ball. Backwards rotation, up and in on the hands. That's a well-placed pitch for Plain being ahead in the count against a home run type hitter. Quarles the go-ahead home run against Arizona. We'll see how she comes back. Here's Brianna Tautalafua. Pops it up. The struggles for Tautalafua have been apparent in the postseason. Now just 0 for 17 in the NCAA tournament. And now UCLA. That number starting to get a little larger in terms of runners in scoring position, just one for 10 at the World Series. There's a Washington that plays for UCLA. Kinsley Washington climbs in. She's had a rock solid NCAA tournament as well. On the outside corner for a strike. Gabby playing already with four K's in this game. She's relied more heavily on the strikeout this postseason. Corners in against the speedster. And yeah. It's two and one. And I think because you're seeing Gabby playing throw different pitches, it's leading to more strikeouts this year in the postseason compared to last year as a freshman. Last year as a freshman, she pitched in 46 innings, had just 36 strikeouts. This year, over 32 innings pitched and 49 strikeouts. Wow. So more strikeouts and fewer innings this season. Two one. I mean, you're seeing her throw a screwball in there. You're seeing her throw a backdoor curveball. You're seeing her really be able to work her rise ball up through the zone and get hitters to chase it. More command of different pitches last year. She heavily relied on her drop ball, and this year it's been more. Three and one. The runner at second and two out. On the ground, Atley over. And it is not in time. The throw home. They've got Pack in a rundown. The toss to Flores and the tag applied to end the inning.
Heads up play by Kaya Gibson to whip that throw home and get packed. Caught in a pickle. Washington is known for their defense, Adam, making another good play to end the inning. Talked about it, one of the top defensive teams in the country the last couple of years. Heads up play here to get the out at home. Love the way that the infield for Washington communicated on this play. Close play at first base, but heads up by Kaya Gibson to catch that ball at first base, not look at the umpire and immediately throw home. And then a well run and executed rundown by Washington to be able to get the out at home. Great call by the first base umpire because Kinsley Washington was indeed safe at first base. And UCLA, an aggressive base running team as we know them, this time it got him a little bit. Yeah, Kirk Walker, the third base coach, likes to push the envelope over there and try to push across runs. But against a well-trained, well-oiled machine Washington defense, it's tough. Well, silent Rain Espinoza made the throw home to finish out that rundown. She'll lead things off in the Washington third in the eighth spot. Couple of good pitches by Garcia to start it off. Yeah, she's on, and it really seems like Gabby Plain's feeling good in the circle, too, yeah. for Washington. I mean, we have a pitcher's duel. And because both of these pitchers are able to locate different pitches for strikes, they're getting strikeouts on different pitches. For Rachel Garcia, she's had four strikeouts in this game, and all of them have come off of different pitches. Oh, defensive swing by Espinoza. Stays alive at one and two. Another strikeout for Garcia, her fifth. One away here in the third. Well, tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern time, a lot of strikeouts on the mound for David Price and CC Sabathia. It's the finale of the series. The Yankees took the first two from the Red Sox. Matt Vasgersian, Alex Rodriguez, and our own Jessica Mendoza will be on the call from the judges' chambers at Yankee Stadium. Baseball tonight, Sunday night countdown at 6 o'clock Eastern time gets us going. As Taryn Alvello heads back to the dugout after getting some work in. Plane seemingly settled down after that. A little bit of shaky stretch of control in the first. Other than that, she's been solid, as has Garcia. Eight of nine batters, first time through, have seen a strike, including Amira Malloy. And boy, she waved at that one. She's been seeing the ball really well at the World Series, really utilizing a lot of her tools. Yeah, I think so, too. She's a player that has a lot of speed. She's very athletic. Just sits in the bottom of the nine hole and makes things happen for this Washington lineup, finding a way to get on base, especially here in OKC. He's five of seven in OKC. And she goes down swinging here. And how about Garcia? The first time through the order, locked and loaded. Struck out two thirds of the lineup. Yeah, in fact, this is four strikeouts in a row now for Garcia using that rise ball. Such good movement. That's a pitch that starts about belt high and it just keeps climbing. So enticing as a hitter to swing with that, especially with two strikes, because you think it's going to stay lower. Well, it's eight in a row retired ever since Sis Bates led off this game with a base hit. This is the heart and soul of Washington softball as it stands right now. And by the way, she still has another year to play. Two-time Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Year. Takes a strike. Does it with her defense. She's a star on defense. Might be, and many would say, the best defensive shortstop in the country. Spark plug with speed at the top of the order for Washington. Heather Tarr calls her a third shutdown pitcher because of her defense. The 2 1. Hasn't taken the bat off her shoulder just yet. 2 and 2. Sis's real name, Nicole, is given the nickname Sis by her brother Jimmy, who is on staff now at Washington. 
Joined the staff this year as an intern. 2-2. Right back to Garcia and another 1-2-3 inning tossed. Washington's lineup had only had three one, two, three innings all tournament, but Rachel Garcia has done it to him back to back frames. She's fan six. And the two time USA Player of the Year is loaded up right now. Excuse me, should you be in here? 38th edition of the NCAA Women's College World Series. Every year in OKC since 1990, except for the Olympic year in 96. Washington and UCLA meeting with a spot in the semifinals on the line. The Huskies need two wins. The Bruins need just one. UCLA's nine hitter, Kelly Gooden, leads things off. And flips one into foul territory. Gooden, one of the top nine hole hitters in all of college softball. A fantastic freshman season offensively. Now granted, high average. She came in bunting about nine times out of every ten at bats, it felt like. But she's learned to swing away a little bit more and use her speed to get on base. Yeah, interesting fact about her, too, is that she paid for her own way to go to the junior national team tryout, and she ended up making the team. Her mom went with her. And she stood out so much that we're like, hey, or the coaches were like, we need her on our team. She needs to be a part of this program. She adds so much value to an offense with her speed and different tools at the plate. One of those coaches on that junior national team was none other than Heather Tarr, who's in the opposing dugout for the Washington Huskies. Kelly Enoy Perez thought, maybe I should call Heather and let her know, hey, I've got one of my players come in. You know, just, just keep an eye on her, see what you think. And then she opted to not call Heather and thought, well, let's see what Heather thinks on her own. And sure enough, Heather called Kelly Enoy Perez to say, I love Kelly Gooden. One, two. Close pitch, but it's taken for a ball. And 433 batting average as it stands now, leading the Pac-12. She and Reina Caranco from Arizona, good battle right at the top of the average charts in Pac-12. 2-2. Waved at that one, and Gabby Plain the first time through the order has five strikeouts. Hey, Gabby playing now five strikeouts for the first time in the order, and two of them have been looking, and they've been the two that have been the furthest right over the heart of the plate, and two strikeouts that were chasing and make it five with the way that Gooden chased that pitch out of the strike zone. Up and away, a rise ball. Kind of like a scries. Keep hearing that word in the Women's College World Series. Strong portmanteau, <laughs> well done. Back to the top, and Bubba Nichols, who struck out looking against playing in the first. the gap in right center field and that will get down and roll to the wall. Bubba Nichols in the second. A one out third inning double for UCLA. And Bubba Nichols in this at bat against Gabby playing she started all the way in the back of the box most likely trying to be able to see that spin longer and deeper and she just went up and made the adjustment let that pitch travel got so deep it's a pitch on the outside corner and that's a perfect contact point to be able to drive that ball to right center field for extra bases Bubba Nichols one of the most consistent hitters to ever wear the uniform at UCLA says her head coach Kellyano Perez. So she's in a scoring position for Brianna Perez. Corners are in. She'll slap through, and Flores will let it go foul. This 
Smart play to let that go foul. I'm thinking back to that Washington Oklahoma State game last night. Was it Sis Bates that just had that ball die up the third baseline? So much English on some of these balls. There's so much spin from the pitchers. A miss hit leads to so much spin on the ground. This one driven in the air towards left center. Malloy is over. And she's got it for out number two. UCLA 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position so far in this game. And can Aliyah Jordan step up? The only RBI with runners in scoring position came on Aliyah Jordan's three run blast to blow it open against Minnesota in the late innings on Thursday. Trying to give UCLA the lead with Nichols at second and two out. Beg your pardon, they do have a hit with a runner in scoring position. One for four. Well, in between Aliyah Jordan and also Bubba Nichols, they've produced a lot of offense in the NCAA tournament for UCLA. They have, they've had a balanced lineup one through nine, but when you separate Nichols and Jordan combined, they've hit 22 RBIs. Yep. The rest of the team, 25 RBIs. They haven't been reliant solely on those two, but those two have been the keys in this lineup. And Aliyah Jordan. On a four pitch walk the first time she was at the plate she has yet to swing and she's ahead in the count seven and oh against Gabby Plain so far. <laughs> Gotta love that seven and oh count feeling really yeah, good classic, as a hitter. Classic <laughs> Bob Euchre seven and oh count. Clearly a hitter's count right. Ball 12. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> Three and oh on Jordan. On the corner for a strike. We talked about this though too. Such a key for all these pitchers with so many big bats in the opposing lineup try not to let the one or two big bats beat you in a game like this when the margin for error is so low. It's tough with UCLA with a lot of big bats. Being careful with Jordan understandably but she draws the walk. Two on with two out in the third and we get the showdown again playing against Garcia. And you know after striking out looking at her first at bat on a pitch right down the middle that Garcia wants another opportunity to get in on the offensive action and play to run. Hold foul. This is the last at bat that Garcia went up against Gabby Plain ended up striking out on that seven pitch right down the middle and you see how she, Gabby Plain like to work her on both sides of the plate low and away and then a little bit up and in but that number seven pitch was the K pitch where she didn't pull the trigger looked at it. All American on all American. Garcia pops it up, charging in Husky, going out Atley, and she made the catch. Great concentration by Taryn Atley to close out the inning, and Plain leaves a pair stranded. Washington's defense never panics. They make the routine plays, they make the great plays, and they communicate so well because they play great together. Welcome back to Oklahoma City. With me now is UCLA head coach Kelly Inouye Perez. And coach, your team has struggled a little bit with runners in scoring position. You've had a couple of chances. What adjustments do they need to make? Well, I think the good news is, is if getting him on base is struggling, then that's a good thing, right? But we got to be patient. We got to be patient with the process. Gabby Plain is, is an effective pitcher. You know, we've had opportunities to face her. It's never been easy. But we, we tend to get stronger through a game, and that's what I'm looking to do. You know, I think this environment makes you want to be able to want things 
sooner than you know they may come and it's just the opposite we got to be patient we got to have quality at bats and like I said the good news is we're putting runners on and that's always a positive. Rachel Garcia has pitched in big games like this before but yep. what have you seen in her eyes today? Um, you know, I think I think Rachel's being Rachel. You know, we gave her the ball because this is this is the time of the year that you know we're we're going to who you know a big part of why we're here. Um, she thrives in these moments. You know, this is a quality Washington team. Once again, we got to play the game pitch to pitch, and every 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 batter is you know is is a battle. But I love that Rachel's just literally pounding the zone and figuring out ways to be able to attack every hitter. Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, Garcia last year gave UCLA the lead in that first game on Sunday against Florida State. Had the RBI, helped out her own cause. Gave up that three run home run to Elizabeth Mason in the first contest Florida State won forced a final game on that bracket and then the two home runs that Garcia allowed to Callie Herod and Jesse Warren Florida State got off to a four nothing lead last year in game two against the Seminoles and UCLA just could not recover they're back in the same spot as they were a year ago two and oh a win away from their first championship series since their last title in 2010 with Garcia the player of the year in the circle she faces Morgan Flores to open up the fourth Flores flies one long run for Jordan and right but she's there and so you think of the importance for UCLA to be able to win this one to not go just like they did last year to play two games against Florida State because that's where they got into trouble because they relied so much on Rachel Garcia in the postseason to be able to carry the load and then throw those back to back games against a hot hitting team on Sunday in the Women's College World Series and she just really tired out. She's thrown every pitch of the World Series almost every pitch of the tournament. Here's Sammy Reynolds. Fisted into center field for a base hit. And the freshman delivers against Garcia to get on board. And so as a team, you never want to make the same mistakes that you did from the year before. And one of the mistakes is that UCLA lost that first game and ended up getting beat twice on Sunday. So you know that this game means more to this UCLA team to be able to come out and handle business in game one and just assure themselves of a spot on Monday. Here's Kaya Gibson. Floater into center. Nichols coming on. Can't make the catch. A right, big turnaround first by Gibson because Reynolds had to wait between first and second to make sure it got down. Well, that big turn. Gibson looked up, realized Reynolds was still there. But are they going to call her out? Did she go yes, out of the base or out of the box, I mean? Out of the box. That's exactly what happened. Kaya Gibson oftentimes will keep her feet still and swing away. This time she ran through the box, and the home plate umpire, Mike Bartling, Called it right away. Tricky play for Bubba Nichols to get to, but oh, they yeah. got saved because she is clearly out of the box. Mike Bartling on it. Yeah, he called it dead immediately, so an out. It goes two unassisted. So Gibson is retired, going out of the box. Second out, Reynolds has to go back to the base that she was preoccupied at. So she's back at first, and Taryn Atley's at the plate. A break for UCLA yep. there. Would have been two on with one out in the fourth. But Gibson was out of the box, so it's one on and two out instead. One and one on Atley. Meanwhile, Washington, you mentioned UCLA trying to just get into the finals. Washington has seen it before. They saw the Seminoles last year work through the loser's bracket, make it to the championship, and actually beat Washington in the champ series. They did it through that double elimination format, being able to lose their first game and still come all the way back and win. It's so hard whether you lose on Thursday or maybe even if, even if you win on Thursday and lose on Friday night, that maybe even be a little tougher because you got to play all four days. And then if you make it to the champ series, you got to play again Monday and then again Tuesday. Bouncing ball to second. Could be two. Washington got, uh, got the force. That's second base. 
Inning over, still scoreless. Inning, get a runner on base. Guy Gibson called out of the box. How did that change the momentum for your team? Oh, and you know, all those things always affect the momentum, but uh, we just got to keep going. Got to keep doing what you need to do to find a way to score. Meanwhile, your defense and Kaya Gibson playing heads up at first base. How does that energize your team with great defensive plays, especially Gabby playing in the circle? Yeah, uh, it just means we're playing Husky softball. And the time we can do that, it feels good. All right, thanks, Coach. Thank you. Heather Tarr was considered to be a little bit of an unorthodox choice when she was hired. And again, she has great experience, was on that first 1996 team that went to the World Series for the first time. Teresa Wilson was the head coach, brought Washington to the series. And then Heather Tarr was hired, but at the time there were newspapers, there were articles written that she was an unconventional hire. Whatever those conventions were thought of, they're way long gone considering the consistency of Washington softball now. Taylor Pack leads things off against Gabby Plain in the fourth. First pitch swinging, pops it up. Plain called off by Espinosa, the third baseman. One pitch and one out. Well, I love the way that this Washington team is just year in and year out one of the best defensive teams. You love to watch them throw the ball around. You love to watch them warm up and just how seriously they take every opportunity they get a chance to touch the ball, whether it's in warm ups or in game. And Heather Tarr. Went to actually the 2008 Olympics and watched Danielle Laurie pitch in those Olympics and took notes about watching Japan play. Mm -hmm. Loved watching them play defense and, and just how they were able to break down the defensive side of things and took it here to Washington. Well, the Coral stands in and takes a ball. The discipline with which they worked, the consistency and uniformity of their drills and the complexity of a lot of the drills learning about angles, learning about foot placement, and trying to do it the exact same every single time. And it's been that mantra for the last decade. One and one. It's hard to have a lot of coaching experience when she got hired. I think that's part of the reason that a lot of people said, oh, this is, I don't know about this hire. It's a little unconventional, considering that there's some great history starting to be built. Heather Tarr has proven a lot of people wrong in the last decade plus. Well, and two, they've not made an error here at the Women's College World Series. They're so consistent with being able to make plays and just so reliable. And as a pitcher, you don't feel like you have to strike everybody out. Now, granted, Taryn Alvello did strike out 16 just, last just night. About That's going to yeah. help the defense out. But both of these pitchers know that they can really rely on the players back behind them on D. 2-1. And Quarles is, on, is in a high leverage count now. Three balls and a strike. Quarles, the big home run off the bench against Arizona. She's got a dozen hits this year, and four of them are homers. Three one delivery. Big cut, and it's three and two. Well, it's a big spot for her too, Adam, because this is just the fifth game that she started all year. Yep. She's only played in about 40 games for UCLA this year. Out of the near 60 they played. As Tiffany told you, a lot as a pinch hitter in key spots. The payoff to Quarles. Fouls it back. Two. Stays alive. Trying to help out her roommate. Her roommate, Rachel Garcia. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody was happier for Malia Quarles getting that big home run against Arizona than Rachel Garcia was on Friday night when we got a chance to talk with her. Obviously, there's two facets to it. Hey, you helped me out as a pitcher. Always good, but really excited for one of her close friends on this team. We 
balls and two strikes on Corals. Got her. At least one strikeout in every inning for Gabby Plain so far. It's a little bit off speed with this curveball that she throws Malia Quarles. It's a backdoor and she drops it down to 59 miles an hour with some nice spin. It's just spinning like crazy, but it's the fact that it threw her timing off a little bit, dropping down from 63 to 59. That curveball that Plain will throw does create a different look of speed. Here's Brianna Tautalafua still seeking her first hit of the NCAA tournament. Tautalafua has come up with big hits in her career. She's had a home run on this stage. And it's been a bit of a rough season for Tautalafua hitting under 200, 0 for 17 in the tournament. Can she finally come through in UCLA's biggest game of the year? In the air, down the left field line. Out of play. Seems like it's always tight between Washington and UCLA, in particular at the World Series. All but one of their previous seven meetings in OKC have been decided by one run. O2 on the outside corner seven strikeouts for Gabby Plain 17 at the World Series this year so far Gabby Plain has so much movement because of her fantastic spin fools Tata Lafua on the outside corner with the drop ball. Pitchers duel scoreless to the top half of the fifth inning at the Women's College World Series. Bruins need one win to reach the finals. The Huskies trying to do it through the loser's bracket, something that we saw just a year ago. Here we go. Can Florida State break through and end years of heartbreak? And the diving catch by Warren for the double play. Is tonight the night for the Seminoles to take home their first national championship? And on the 10th try, the Florida State Seminoles have won their first national championship. They won six straight games, four of them elimination games to reach the finals. It's only been done eight times after losing game one to reach the championship series. And only three times has a champion been crowned after coming out of the loser's bracket. Hadn't been done in a long time until Florida State did it last season against Heather Tars Huskies. And the helm leads things off for Washington in the top of the fifth against Garcia. These two teams, as you mentioned, have met seven times before, including a title game. and it's one and two. Nineteen ninety nine Women's College World Series championship game UCLA came out on top three to two. Amanda Freed saved it for Courtney Dale that day. Julie Adams had the big two base hits. For the Bruins had a couple of RBIs in that contest. And just like so many others between UCLA and Washington here in OKC, a one run affair. Two two to helm. Fall away. And just five hits in this game. That's yeah. it. Both of these pitchers have been stingy. Love that. Me too. 
in a year of offense and I mean a great offensive year one of the best we've had in college softball we've had a lot of tight ones man like this we've gotten back to some old we've heard coaches say it's some old school 1990s 2000s type of softball games here at the World Series this weekend other than Alabama's blowout of Florida yesterday it's been relatively tight for most of these games three and two on helm love the way that Paige Halstead is just communicating with Rachel Garcia back behind the plate you can see her face whenever Rachel Garcia throws a good pitch like that last rise ball it wasn't a strike and she didn't get a swing but she's just loving it constant support and communication that Halstead is giving Rachel to help her out payoff pitch to helm towards the gap in right center long run nickel she will not get there and it will bound to the wall a leadoff fifth inning double for Emma Helm. Just her second hit at the World Series. Just trying to be a spark for this Washington offense and find a way to get things going. This is one of the better at bats that we've seen out of Washington in this game. Ended up taking some close pitches to get the backdoor curveball that caught more of the plate and drove it to that right center field gap past Bubba Nichols all the way to the wall for extra bases. Helm hits the double as the DP will step out. And Megan Vandegrift will check in, the freshman, as the game's first run potentially sitting at second base. Washington has scuffled at times here at the Women's College World Series with runners in scoring position. Their first opportunity against Garcia today. Husky showing bunt, pulls back. And right now in a bunt situation, Vandegrift at second base can get a big lead because Bree Perez was headed towards third base on the bunt. Kinsley Washington, the second baseman, was headed towards first base. She can get a good jump. Up and in. Garcia going to that rise ball, trying to get Husky to pop up that ball. And a trip from the dugout from Lisa Fernandez. Well, tonight after Sunday Night Baseball, our man SVP will have post-game reaction from game two at Scotiabank Arena between the Raptors and the Warriors. That game on ABC tonight. We'll take you inside the Red Sox-Yankees series and rivalry. And if you didn't check it out, an outstanding SE feature. 30 years later, Tim Hardaway, Mitch Richmond, Chris Mullen, how run TMC changed the NBA. That's on SportsCenter with SVP tonight. You saw Lisa Fernandez come out. She's handled most of the pitching duties, pitch calling duties this year. That's been more of a change. And she's done it with the entire staff with not only Garcia, but two very solid options behind Garcia this season. Yeah, and Holly Acevedo and then the freshman of Megan Faremo, who got Pac-12 Freshman of the Year this year. 2-0 on Husky in their first strike. And during the regular season, they really wanted to find a way to work their pitching staff to not only make them tougher, but to be able to, to take on more innings in the regular season so that Rachel Garcia would be her best at the Women's College World Series. But Megan Faramo helping Rachel Garcia get better this season. And she did that by stepping onto the team. And at first she had told Rachel, hey, I'm, I'm really here to help you out. I want to be that person that can help you not throw your arm off. And Rachel looked at her and said, no, I don't want you to be that person. I want you to compete with me. I want you to beat me out this year. And so far, she's heeding said advice. Seven more strikeouts today for Garcia. One down in the fifth. Moving her rise ball up and out of the zone and getting Husky, the freshman, to chase that pitch. And again, Paige Halstead, a huge contributor to this UCLA team, just continuing to pump Rachel Garcia up in the big moments. There's Silent Rain Espinoza. Can Washington execute at the bottom of its lineup? Espinoza, the eight hitter. Malloy, the nine hitter, who's had a good World Series, is on deck.
and think about it, Adam, we talked about Paige Halstead. She only catches. She doesn't hit in the offensive lineup. She's the flex, so she just is there for her defensive participation and contribution to this team. So she even brings it more on defense, knowing that she doesn't provide anything with her stick. Only 12 at bats in the entire NCAA tournament. And those usually come when Azevedo or Faremo are pitching. Since Garcia hits for herself. One and two on Espinosa. Vandegriff, the go ahead run for the Huskies. Down the left field line. Good in, dives, got it! What a play by Kelly. Good and two down. Kelly Gooden is one of the best freshmen, one of the best outfielders, period, in the country. What a read, what a focus to be able to see this ball all the way in and commit to knowing that if she laid out for it, she knew she could come away with it with a runner in scoring position to get the important second out. Two down for Amira Malloy. I think Garcia was a little bit more amped up on that delivery as it hits 70. All defensive selection of the Pac-12 as a freshman this year. Already two solid plays in this game. Malloy pushes the bunt. Coming on is Tauta Lafua. It is in time. Amira Malloy. Making her case to Cameron Ellison. The umpires may discuss this. Gooden got the huge second out on that full extension dive and foul ground. Boy, a bang, bang play at first base. Looked like the umpires were discussing it. Heather Tarr did go out to chat with Cameron Ellison, but it's a third out, and we are still scoreless going to the bottom half of the fifth inning. All the umpires are going to get together. Mike Bartling behind home, Cameron Ellison at first, Tracy Laycock at second, and Chris Drum at third. Just discussing that last play, and Amira Malloy is still standing on first base. Now, it looked like the ball was in the glove of Washington, the second baseman, covering that play. Yeah, she's out, and I think, too, they might have been asking about obstruction. Yeah, she's kind of standing on the front side of the plate, that, uh, the bag there. Yeah, blocking the bag without having the ball in her hand, straddling the first base bag. Let's take a listen here. On the front side of the base there. No. Okay, no. Okay. I did not have that. Okay. No. They went through it the right way. Cameron Ellison went to the home plate umpire, asked him if he had seen any obstruction. No obstruction to call. The inning is over. Man, that's wrong right now. Welcome back to Hall of Fame Stadium in Oklahoma City. It's very rare that you have a couple of Super Bowl champions with their daughters on the field playing for their alma mater. But to my right is UCLA alum James Washington. To my left, Lawyer Malloy, a Washington alum. And I'm going to ask you first, James, your daughter Kinsley is up to bat in this tight-knit ball game. What do you tell your daughter in this moment, having been a champion yourself? All I just tell her in simple terms is keep your head in there. Um, you're dealing with a, a pitcher that actually, and she knows because she's watched a lot of film, but she just has to keep her head in there and see the ball. If you can see it, you can hit it. You are a competitive athlete. I mean, you gave everything. When you looked at the way your daughter was thrown out at first base, what do you think? What do you feel the angst as a father? Close, close play, but this is a dog bite, a good old Pac-12 dog bite. And just, uh, just keep your head in it. You always get another chance. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Good luck, good guys. Dog. All right, thank you. All American defensive players in their days at UCLA and Washington. And here is James's daughter, Kinsley, right there. Perfect timing as Kinsley will lead things off. I just think that's so cool. I have the biggest smile on my face right awesome. now watching that interview. 
A tight play between Washington and Malloy <laughs> at first base a moment ago. Again, we saw the obstruction rule changed, by the way, a couple of years ago with actually events that unfolded here involving UCLA. The NCAA Playing Rules Oversight Committee actually banned defenders from blocking the plate or a base before having possession of the ball effective from last year. But in the umpire's estimation, there was no blockage of the base, hence no obstruction from the home plate umpire when Cameron Ellison went to Mike Bartling and they handled it the proper way. Heather Tarr came out. Asked the first base umpire, he asked the home plate umpire, the crew chief, and that's how they came up with the call that they came up with. One and two on Washington. Poked it to Espinoza for out number one. We're getting into the late innings now and every pitch feels a little bit more magnified with two All-Americans in the circle and a spot in the championship series on the line. Bruins need one win. Washington needs to beat UCLA twice to advance. Yeah, you start playing this game and, and I think we even forget like you just feel like it's a Pac-12 matchup <laughs> back in March or April but we're at the Women's College World Series. You're trying to play for a national championship. Here's the nine hitter Kelly Gooden. Just had that sparkling defensive play in foul territory in the last half inning to get the second out. A big out in that frame. Her speed helps her out in so many different ways, especially out in the outfield where she can cover a lot of ground. But then up at the plate, too, if she can just get the top of the ball, put it in play, she gives herself so much better of a chance to find a way on base. Only Kayla Conwent, who was the Big Ten Player of the Year at Wisconsin, had a better batting average amongst Power Five players. Then came in over 440 into the World Series. 1 1 from Plain. Yeah, you can see that Gooden starts pretty close to the plate for a slapper. And in fact, I don't want to. Jinx her here, but doesn't often get called for stepping out of the box like you see for some other slappers across the country with that that rule change. But she said she had some problems with it in the fall, and it was a little bit of a slow fall for Gooden because she was still trying to get used to changing some mechanical things. The 2 1. On the ground is short. Sis Bates to her left, has to hurry, and gets the play for out number two. Bubba Nichols coming up at the top of the UCLA order. Yeah, and she made such an adjustment from her first at bat where she struck out looking on a drop ball out to her second bat against Gabby playing the same pitch, the same location, and she took it to that right center field gap for extra bases. So all about, I mean, to add nausea, making adjustments in this game, you hear it over and over and over again, but you, have, you can't feel sorry for yourself. You have to go up, expect the same pitch that you just struck out looking on and do damage to it. Plain starts off Nichols with a strike. That's what the best hitters are going to do. That's what the best pitchers are going to do. Do you think that Gabby Plain is going to throw <laughs> her in that same spot after hitting a double? Probably not. Maybe go up in the zone a little bit with her rise ball. Maybe throw a drop ball that's even further down in the zone below her knees. Ball and a strike on Nichols. And you get to a point, the top of the lineup for UCLA, too, where they have a chance to hit home runs. Five home runs between Bubba Nichols and Aaliyah Jordan in the NCAA tournament. The rest of the team has just hit four. Those two have combined for 28 home runs this year. Those two and Taylor Pack, the three biggest power threats in the UCLA lineup. One and one on Nichols. On the ground foul.
in the air to center. Amira Malloy underneath it. And a one, two, three frame tossed by Plain. Top of the Husky order coming up in a scoreless semifinal. Welcome back to OKC on this semifinal Sunday. Molly McGrath with former Husky Danielle Laurie and the Tides Kayla Bro. Danielle, where is your anxiety level watching this game? Oh, I'm definitely a little bit stressed, but you also <laughs> have to look at the Huskies are on, on such a completely different path than last year, making it to the national championship game. Last year, they had to get be beat once on Sunday. Now they have to try to beat the reigning national player of the year twice, so it's going to be tough for them. And, and speaking of last year, I think the challenge for UCLA moving forward is there's always going to be that tiny little thought in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. This is we got beat twice on this same road last season to the eventual national champions FSU. So trying to fight that as well as battle in this game. We'll be joined by a player from the winning team after the game and we'll preview Oklahoma, Alabama and gauge Caleb Bro's anxiety, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> it's been that type of weekend, I think, for both of those two champions. How cool did that look, by the way? Just the entire park just about filled with that beautiful background behind Molly, Kayla and Danielle. It's gorgeous here. Yeah, and this game is worthy of a great day like today. Semi-final, UCLA needs one, Washington needs two. We're scoreless to the sixth, and it's the top of the Washington order against Garcia. Sis Bates leading it off. One and one. Field playing in the outfield coming in as well against Bates not known for her power does not have a home run this year has only hit eight in her career at Washington you see the outfield all stepping in a little bit from left to right There's a strike. It's got to be hilarious for Heather Tarr or Lisa Fernandez. Heather coaches down at third for Washington. Fernandez coaches down at first for UCLA, and they're in front of the opposing fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Heather keeps getting a little laugh because she keeps looking over to that Bruin section and getting a giggle out of it. <laughs> Missed the corner and it's three and two on Bates. Garcia's payoff. Got her swinging. Another strikeout for Rachel Garcia, her eighth. The way that Garcia just challenged Sis Bates in that moment. 70 miles an hour with the backdoor curveball. So much belief in this pitch to be able to wrap it back around the outside part of the plate. She just doesn't give in. It doesn't matter what the count is, it doesn't matter what the situation is. She's not going to give in in the circle. Four pops, four ground outs, eight Ks. Here's Flores. She's been as productive as any hitter for Washington in the postseason. But just one for 10 in OKC this weekend, the one hit, the home run. That came yesterday in an elimination contest against Minnesota. It was her ninth career postseason home run, tying the second leading home run hitter in Washington history in Jamie Clark. Clark had 73 in her career. Flores rips it past Heather Tarr, foul. The all-time Washington leader, Kristen Rivera, 79 home runs in her career. This has been Morgan Flores's biggest power year by far. One and two. Flores into right. Coming on Jordan, it's going to drop for a base hit. 
And Washington has a runner aboard here in the sixth. And Rachel Garcia has gone up against a lot of these left-handed hitters for Washington. And she gives them a couple of different looks because she can spin this screwball on the outside corner that moves away from them. So as a lefty, you don't know if the pitch is going to move away or bend back over the outside corner, like with her backdoor curveball that she spins and breaks in back towards the plate. It's so hard to recognize because she has good command of both of those pitches. You know, if it's going to be a ball or a strike. Man, that first run is so crucial. In the 10 games played at the Women's College World Series so far, the team to score first has won every game. And a pinch runner is in for Flores. That's Francesca Taraka, who left a bag early in her World Series debut yesterday, left second base early and was called out seconds after she stepped on the bag for the first time. She's in at first, a big run. Sammy Reynolds, big cut, nothing and one. Taraka, crucial at first base with the heart of the Washington order up. One and one. And Rachel Garcia just puts the ball where she wants it, whenever she wants it. Uh, varying speeds, varying locations, goes up and in with a backdoor curveball in the hands of Sammy Reynolds, and then changes speeds with an off-speed drop ball to follow it up. Try that corner again, missed outside. Reynolds is homered at the World Series already. The 2 1. Check swing. Appeal down to third, and Chris Drum, she says no swing. It's a good take by Sammy Reynolds. Going up against Garcia, you have to see the ball down. Not going to have much success against that rise ball at all, and oftentimes it's a swing and miss. Right back to the corner. This time Garcia clipped it, and it's 3 and 2. Reynolds into right field. Base hit. Holding up at second, Taraka. Two on, one out for Washington in the sixth inning. It's a great at bat by Sammy Reynolds. So the pitch before her hit was a backdoor curveball at the knees on the outside corner. It's a beautiful pitch. Reynolds didn't even know what to do with it. But then Garcia, the very next pitch, comes inside with the curveball, and Reynolds is like, thank you. Bell tie drives it down the right side of the field. And now two hits for Washington in this inning. Lisa Fernandez out to chat with Halstead and Garcia as a pinch hitter is slated to check in for Kaya Gibson. That'll be Noel He. Well, Sammy Reynolds. Keeping the line moving for the Huskies. What do you got, Tiff? Well, she's a local product who always wanted to go to Washington. In fact, the pitching coach for the Huskies, Lance Glasso, was her travel ball coach. He loved the way she approached the game, the hitting and the speed that she brought to the game. But he also said she really has taken to coaching very well, an infectious personality and one who will continue to grow with this program. Thanks so much, Tiff. Stepping into this big stage, not an easy thing to do. And help contribute right off the bat. She has done so. I'm not sure what the discussion is here. We were just talking about Lance Glasso, both he and JT D'Amico. The assistants for Heather Tarr are both talking with Mike Bartling. Still pointing out, Lance is still pointing towards home plate, Mike Bartley. Fascinated to know what that conversation is all about. A big spot here, Noel He to the plate as the pinch hitter for Gibson. They wanted to make sure we're being told that 
they weren't being charged with a conference with that visit. They were not charged with that mound visit, with that circle visit. Only a substitution for that. That's why he was brought in. A ball and a strike. He has had some clutch hits. Had a big home run in the Super Regional last year. Had a big one against Alabama. Did it this past Super against Kentucky. It was Noel He who last year as a freshman, when Morgan Flores went down with an injury, one of their leaders on this team, she stood up in the locker room, first year player, and told the team, guys, it's going to be OK. Who would have thought that she would have been the one to give a little boost to all the upperclassmen? Two balls and two strikes on Noel He. Two two. Popped up. And Halstead will not have a chance. Garcia working he so hard in yeah. on the inside corner with the backdoor curve with the rise ball. Taryn Atley on deck. pitch got her swinging held on to by Halstead and a clutch K for Garcia against Noel he her ninth of the day talked about how Garcia worked her on the inner half with the plate up and in on her hands and then back to her curveball at the knees that's where she lived in this entire at bat he didn't chase that one ended up getting jammed on the foul ball and then the strikeout up again with the rise there's Taryn Atley taking strike one. Garcia gets a strike on the corner again, and it's nothing in two. Two on, two out. Sixth inning semifinal, and Garcia trying to get out of this jam. What a performance by Garcia, and we are still scoreless. She's coming up. Semi-final Sunday here at Hall of Fame Stadium. UCLA and Washington. The Bruins need one win. The Huskies need two. Oklahoma needs one. Alabama needs two. Guaranteed a Pac-12 finalist for a second consecutive season. The top-seeded Sooners trying to make it three titles in the last four years. Can you believe that we just have four teams left? We started with close to 300. This season, going all the way back to February. And here we are in these final moments, final games in OKC of this season. Nothing, nothing. The two hitter for UCLA is Brianna Perez. It'll be Perez followed by Aaliyah Jordan and then Rachel Garcia. Back-to-back -back USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year who has 10 strikeouts in the circle today. Dueling with Gabby Plain, who's got seven Ks today for Washington. Back to Plain. Throws to Gibson for the out. One away in the sixth. Gabby Plain keeping this balanced Bruins offense in check today. And if she got into any trouble, then you know that you have Taryn Alvello yep. to be able to come in relief and have her back like she did yesterday. Here is Jordan, who has walked on nine pitches today twice. 
Sends one deep. Playable. Reynolds over, and she's got it for out number two. And here comes the showdown in the late innings this time. All-American on All-American, Gabby Plain against Rachel Garcia. Three pitches to get the first two outs here in the sixth. Garcia struck out looking on a pitch down the middle in the first. Popped out on a good play by Taryn Atley for the runner in scoring position, saving a run. Atley in the third. The 1-0. Little cue shot to Bates at short. Over to first in time. A 1-2-3 inning through a tough part of the order. Tossed by Gabby Plain. We go to the seventh. Still scoreless on semifinal Sunday. Old school pitchers duel on this Sunday afternoon in Oklahoma City Rachel Garcia and Gabby Plain have kept these two offenses at bay just eight hits on this diamond between the two teams against Garcia and playing the All-Americans 17 strikeouts between the two and we remain scoreless to the seventh inning and Washington actually out hitting UCLA. Yep. Washington with five hits, UCLA with three. And here's Emma Helm to lead things off in the Washington seven. And I think too, with watching how Washington has played this game so confidently and been so comfortable on this field, you, you've forgotten that this is an elimination game yeah. for them. If they <laughs> lose this game, then that's it. Their season is over and their seniors career are done. Emma Helm, deep drive, but in the park. Nichols is there for out number one in the seven. She just missed that. Adam Amin, two-time All-American Amanda Scarborough, Tiffany Green, our wonderful crew here in Oklahoma City. Here's Madison Husky. The hundredth Garcia pitch is a ball outside. One and one. Could we see Taryn Alvello potentially at some point? I don't know if you want to take Gabby playing out. I highly doubt they would. Just at some point, if Washington wins this game, you know you're probably going to see Alvello at some point today. You got to get there first. Washington was in UCLA's position a year ago, sitting at 2-0. Come semifinal Sunday. One and two. But it's just interesting because usually teams get to this elimination game and they start playing scared to lose instead of playing to win and I haven't seen that out of Washington one bit didn't see it yesterday didn't see it today they had an incredible run yesterday as did the Alabama Crimson Tide both teams had to win twice Alabama beat two former national champions en route Beating the Florida Gators and then the second winning his title team, the Arizona Wildcats. Husky drives it into center for a base hit. Waited back on that off-speed delivery, and she's aboard with the go-ahead run for Washington. Yeah, Rachel Garcia hasn't thrown a ton of change-ups in this game, but she throws one to Maddie Husky here, and she's able to sit back and keep her hands back, get her barrel on plane stay in her legs and drive this pitch right back up the middle. 
at a perfect spot, just finding a hole out there in center field. So here's Silent Rain Espinoza. 0 for 2 today. Was robbed of, wouldn't have been a base hit, but robbed of another pitch. She floated one foul down the left field line in foul territory, and Kelly Gooden dove to get a huge second out in that fifth inning. And the Huskies threatened with a runner in scoring position. Was in there for the bunt that time to try to move Husky in the count one and one. Mentioned it, Amanda. Six hits now for Washington after the one out single by Husky. Garcia has seen traffic on the base paths today. She's stranded a handful of Washington base runners. Check swing roller foul. Yeah, but they've yet to get a runner to third base. Yep. Husky's 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position today. Right now, a runner at first and one out. Check swing again. Chris Drum says no swing, and the count runs full on Silent Rain. Go ahead, run it first. The payoff pitch is high for ball four. There are two on with one out, and Amira Malloy in the nine spots coming up. Five for 33 this weekend for the Washington Huskies. They've left 29 on base in their three games so far. And how about the at bats of the two freshmen and the bottom of the order put together? Maddie Husky with the single and the silent Rain Espinosa with the walk. That's just the first walk in this game that Rachel Garcia has given up. It's a really big at bat from the eight hole. Garcia labored a little bit in that sixth inning. Stranded two, striking out the side. And Amira Malloy has really come on strong since the Kentucky series in the Supers. 0 for 2 today. The corners are in against the speedster. Strike one. She laid down that bunt in her last at bat, and it was that close play at first base. And Bria Tatalafua made an incredible play on the bunt, thrown across her body, bang, bang play to Kinsley Washington at first base. It's well executed, both offensively and defensively. Big cut from Malloy, and it's nothing in two. Bates on deck. 111 pitches from Garcia. Her 0-2 to Malloy. The game's first runs are aboard. One and two. High and away, two and two. Are swinging. Two down here in the seventh on the 11th. Garcia strikeout. The fourth with a runner in scoring position. Going to that rise ball in the outside corner. And it has a little bit of backdoor movement. It not only breaks across the plate back in, but it moves up a little bit too. It's so deceptive. And getting Malloy just and a bit of indecisiveness within that at bat with the runner in scoring position. 
Well, back to the top, and here is Sis Bates. Takes ball one. A base hit in the first, grounded out, and struck out since. on the outside corner. And still Paige Halstead, I mean, you think about how big of a leader that she's being right now. It's been kind of a stagnant game, not a lot of momentum because nobody's scored any runs, but still she knows how important every pitch is and for her defense to stay in it. Bates pops it up. The shortstop Perez is there. And we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. A run sends the Bruins to the championship series. Some of the moments from the semifinal Sunday and what has been a dynamite pitcher's duel. Six hits scattered by Rachel Garcia, just three by Washington's Gabby Plain. And it's nothing, nothing to the bottom of the seventh. And now the pressure ratchets up that much higher. A run for UCLA, and they are headed to their first championship series since 2010. And one of their best home run hitters will lead things off against Gabby Plain in Taylor Pack. She's the only leadoff hitter that has reached today for UCLA. That was back in the second. She's the only runner to reach third for the Bruins today. Remember, she was thrown out on that infield single trying to come around and score from second base on a bunt in the infield. She's the only player in this game that's even felt third base today. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. She's it. Between these two teams and these two pitchers. Nothing, nothing, bottom seven. Here we go. Dozen home runs this season for Taylor Pack. Strike one. Ten in a row sent down by Gabby Plain since a walk to Aaliyah Jordan back in the third. That was the last time UCLA had a base runner. It was Taylor Pack who won game one against Washington in the regular season for Rachel Garcia with a bases clearing double. Fouls it back and it's one and two. Whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes. Planes one, two to pack. Down the right field line, foul. You think about two, Adam, how hard it is to beat a team four times in one year. Yeah. UCLA sweeping the regular season against Washington. I mean, it, it, you play a team, a good team, four times, that's hard to win four times in one year. A sweep in mid-March to open up Pac-12 play, UCLA beating Washington. One, two. Pack drills it, but foul. Not only did Pack deliver that bases clearing double, she did it after Rachel Garcia was intentionally walked in front of her to get to Taylor Pack, a player that was a non-scholarship player to start out her career, who didn't have a whole lot of power, and has been huge in the middle of this UCLA lineup. One ball, two strikes on Taylor Pack.
in the dirt. It's two and two. Sophomore from Sydney, Australia, Gabby Plain. Deals two balls, two strikes. Three and two. Three, two. Ball four, and the winning run is aboard for the Bruins. Just the third walk issued by Plain today. And look who's coming up. She's already hit a big bomb to help UCLA win a game at the World Series. On Friday night in a winner's bracket game, with the game tied off the bench into the seats for a UCLA lead against Arizona. Against another Pac-12 opponent and just seems like when her team needs her the most, she's able to step up. But we'll be interested to see how the coaching staff plays this if they leave her in, if they bring in somebody to be able to put a bunt down, if they bring in a pinch runner like they're they're strategizing right now with Kelly Inouye Perez and then Lisa Fernandez and Kirk Walker trying to decide what they want to do. You got Colleen Sullivan, who's been in the starting lineup a bunch. She could hit if you wanted to take Coral's bat out for an at-bat. If you wanted to bring in speed, they've got plenty of that on their bench. I think they're going to leave it. Yep. I'm going to let Coral's hit. They're going to leave Pack on base. And now Lance Glasso will <laughs> counter with a visit of his own. And they will look like Taylor Pack is moving back towards the dugout. And that's because Washington's going to make a pitching change. We were wondering if we were going to see it. They're not going to exchange visors this time. They both got one on. Taryn Alvello is coming in for playing. The winning run is on base for UCLA. Because the flame throwing Taryn Alvello in what could be the final appearance of her career coming on against a bitter rival coming off one of the best performances of her career last night. Yeah, she's comfortable to start a game and she's comfortable in relief. And how fitting is it, Adam, that Velo is in Alvelo's name? I mean, <laughs> can we start calling her Taryn Alvelo? I mean, well, <laughs> Alvelo overrated Alvelo because she throws gas. I heard Beth say it last night. Tilo with the Velo. We like to call Danielle Delo. Tilo with the velo is in. She throws 70, 71, sometimes 72. And it is power against power with the winning run at first base. In pack, it is quarrels against all velo. Nobody out, bottom of the seventh. The Bruins win. They're headed to the finals. And the first pitch comes in at 71 from all velo. And it's such a big change, Adam, because these hitters just went up against anywhere between 59 and at the highest 63 out of the hand of Gabby Plain. And now they're going to go up against a pitcher that throws 70 and will sometimes touch 73 miles an hour. In there for a strike at 70, and it's nothing and two. Coral struck out twice swinging against Plain. Oh, two. Got her swinging at 72. Alvella went right at Quarles with their curveball to start it. And this pitch right here, oh, that looked like it caught a lot of the plate. Then struck her out with the curveball. Three pitches. She goes back to the bench, and it's a strikeout for Alvello. And Plains loving it. And here is Brianna Tautalafua, 0 for 18 in the NCAA tournament. Swinging away, and it's strike one. 
She's been so clutch in her career before. Can she pull it out of the hat right now in a huge slump? Going up against the hard tossing Alvella. Showing bunt, and it's one and one. She's thrown five pitches. They've all been right around 70. One and two, 72. And the thing about this game is that you can swing and miss a couple of times and look like that, but Adam, it just takes one yep. pitch. Doesn't matter if you're 0 for 20 or 20 for 20, it still just takes one pitch. A winning run at first base for Tata Lafua and the Bruins. The one, two. Upstairs at 69, two balls and two strikes. Swinging. Back to back strikeouts out of the bullpen for all Velo. Two down. It's that curveball with even a little bit of up movement. The pitch before was well out of the zone. Tato Lafua took it, and Alvelo brings it down a little bit to the strikeout. You see that Washington, since 2008, is the only team to shut UCLA out in the NCAA tournament. That was on that Saturday night game in an elimination contest here at the World Series. Alvelo against a freshman, Rachel Garcia. The only run of the game, the Ali Aguilar blast to right in a 1-0 contest. That was the last time that they beat UCLA. Six straight wins for the Bruins in the regular season since. And now Colleen Sullivan will check in for Kinsley Washington. She had started the first two games of this World Series. Quarles got the start for her today. She climbs in against Alvelo. Popped up. Husky coming in. And she's got it. What more do you expect with Washington and UCLA at the World Series? We're going to extra innings. Taryn Alvelo comes in for relief, strikes out a pair. Let's go win this ball game. The senior imploring her offense to try to scratch off a run against Garcia. Coming in clutch out of the pen as she's done multiple times this year. And getting Washington out of that frame. So we head to extra innings in the semifinals between UCLA and Washington. The Bruins need one win to move on to their first championship series since 2010. The Huskies trying to make it back-to-back -back trips to the finals after they were denied a title a season ago by Florida State. It'll be two, three, and four against Garcia in the Washington order. Flores, Reynolds, and Gibson. Lance Glasso talking with Taryn Alvello, who called that brutal loss, the finale against UCLA in mid-March, where she took the brunt of all 15 runs. Heather Tarr left her out there for 150-plus pitches to send a message to the senior. That message was delivered. She's been outstanding since. Now all she can do, though, with that flame-throwing right arm is hold it in front of her face and hope that her team comes up on offense. Here's Flores. Swing it away, sending one deep. Back at the wall, good in. It is over the fence, but foul. Ooh. Just out in front. And all Garcia can do is laugh in relief. Love the approach of Morgan Flores, who thought that this one was going to be out, just admiring it in the air. And then it's like, dang it. Got to go back Man. there and try it again. But 
But the thing is, right-handers have been getting jammed on that backdoor right. curveball out of the hand of Rachel Garcia. And so Morgan Flores goes up there looking in at 70 miles an hour, and she gets her barrel to it, just barely goes foul. You're trying to cut off the spin, right? When it comes that far inside, you're trying to swing early to take Get away that spin. More out in front, too. All these hitters are getting jammed and surprised that it's in on their hands. Just like jammed that. Jammed right there, yep. Halstead's there for out number one. Boy, we were a foot or two away from this thing being a one nothing game with one swing from Morgan Flores. That'll be a fun conversation. Who hit it deeper the last time these two teams met? Was it Ali Aguilar or Morgan Flores yeah. on the foul ball? <laughs> One down for Sammy Reynolds. And I doubt in this at bat that Sammy Reynolds will get an inside pitch. It's going to be up to her to look away with a backdoor curveball in the outside corner that Garcia's had some success with against her, but the two hits that she's had has been on a curveball up and in. All right, about Bell tie in. Has a hit to center and a hit to right today. Flores putting the gear back on, gearing up for the bottom half of the eighth inning when UCLA will have nine, one, and two. Very dangerous part of the UCLA order. Reynolds towards short. Off the glove of Perez and into center field. Would have been a very impressive play had Perez gotten there. It will be a single for Reynolds, her third hit of this game. Her good, seventh at the World Series, Amanda. Good piece of hitting by her to take that outside corner, drive it right back up the middle. Got a good piece of the barrel to it, just barely out of the reach of Bree Perez. And I think if you ask Bree, Bree Perez if she expects to make that play, she would say absolutely. Oh, what a stamp Sammy Reynolds is putting on this World Series. Here's Gibson. Swinging away. Gibson was pinch hit for in the six with two on and one out. Noel, he came in against Garcia, and Garcia struck out he and Atley back to back to end that threat. Now the go-ahead run is aboard with one out in the eighth, and Gibson back in 0 for 2. Struck out and was ruled out of the box in her second at bat. On the outside corner, nothing and two. Locked and focused right now. Taryn Alvello knowing that she's going to have a big job regardless of what happens in this top of the eighth inning. Foul back in our direction. One and two. Just wanted to be noted that I didn't move out of the way of that one. <laughs> and I, I, I did shuffle right just to make sure. <laughs> this has been a hazard zone all weekend. <laughs> it really has. Two and two. I trust Karen. I don't trust Melty. Great crew. Karen John, Steve Melton here in the booth with Amanda and I and Beth and Michelle and Jess. Wonderful crew in OKC. Three balls and two strikes. You, know, you got to give it to Washington in the sense that they've really made Garcia go deep into some counts. Almost 130 pitches that she's thrown now. Just given up that one walk. So in each of their bats, they've seen a lot of pitches. Peel down to third, no swing. It is ball four, and the go-ahead run moves into scoring position with only one out for the Huskies in the eighth. It doesn't get much closer than this on whether or not this pitch is going to be called a strike. 
on the call or on the swing, but to me it did look like she held back on her check swing. And it's a pitch that's about two balls off the plate, so a good call by the home plate umpire, Mike Bartling, called that a ball. Again, it's been well documented in this World Series, the struggles for Washington with runners in scoring position. Can they finally cash in? Rachel Garcia has locked in in these tough spots today. Here's what's at stake. Washington trying to make it back to the championship series and see if they can get their first title in a decade. UCLA, the winningest title team in the history of the program, hasn't been to the champ series since their last title in 2010. UCLA needs one win. The Huskies need two. A champ series appearance awaits. Here's Taryn Atley. Strike one. Oh for three so far today. One of 11 strikeout victims of Garcia. That was back in the second. Nothing in two. And still Washington looking to get that first runner to third base. Yeah. This entire game, no runner has reached third. And Garcia has stranded seven Huskies. They've left 31 on base in this World Series so far. No balls and two strikes on Taryn Atley. Reynolds the go-ahead run at second. Here are those props when you get when you get the foul ball. Well done. <laughs> Side. Much different looking Washington team from a year ago. Lost five key contributors, all 300 plus hitters, who are all rock solid defenders for Heather Tarr. But the pitching staff was back and some veteran leadership. A bouncer on the infield. Garcia snares it to get the lead runner. <laughs> wow. Cut off her all Pac 12 defensive selection shortstop to snare that ball and get Reynolds out. And still, no Husky has touched third. And what a play and read by Rachel Garcia to see this ball off the bat, move to it, and understand that she was moving toward third base to be able to get the force out. If that ball would have gotten to Bree Perez at shortstop, it would have been a much more difficult play for her to go to third. She most likely would have gone one. And the go-ahead run would have been at third instead of second for Emma Helm. She made that play look so easy. Yeah. I mean, and the fact, too, that you have to release a pitch, see the pitch come out of your hand, and then make contact with the bat, field your position, and then make a decision where you want to go. Incredible athleticism by Rachel Garcia. On the outside corner at 71 for a strike. Emma Helm, two for 13 here in Oklahoma City this weekend. You know, we'll see a meeting in the circle and at the plate. You know, Washington's put together four hits in the last three innings. And you think about for UCLA, they haven't had a hit since way back in the third inning, the Bubba Nichols double. So momentum offensively right now is in Washington's hands. It's just they have to take advantage of getting these runners on and pushing them across. And you just wonder, because of the stress on Garcia, two long outings, over 110 pitches in each of the first two starts today, now getting extended in this one to almost 140 pitches. She's tossed every pitch of the World Series. That's why Kelly Enoy Perez wanted a staff. That's why she wanted great twos and threes behind Garcia to keep her fresh for these innings in OKC. The 1-1. Two and one. And she's still gassing it in at 71. Oh. 
Helms ahead in the count three balls and a strike. This will be pitch number 140 for Garcia in this outing. Extra inning semifinals tied with a go-ahead run for the Huskies in scoring position. The 3-1 to Helm. Ball four, and the bases are loaded. You can see that pitch count just continue to rise for Rachel Garcia, and even more reason that UCLA wants to win this game right here. They don't want to play two today. That's what they did last year. That's when they ended up losing. They want to win this game and have Rachel Garcia shut down these bats right now. And have her potentially ready to go for a game one in the Champ Series tomorrow night if UCLA can win this one. They only need to win one. Washington will have to beat UCLA twice to advance to the Champ Series. And the aptly named Madison Husky climbs in with the go ahead run at third. Strike one. A base hit in the seventh. She's never had a hit in her career with the bases loaded. Big cut and it's nothing in two. Biggest pitch of the game right here. One ball, two strikes. Two outs in the eighth. Just got a piece. Fouled away. A seven hole hitter for the Huskies. One, two to Husky. Inside, two balls, two strikes. Ooh, that almost hit her. If she gets hit by that pitch, that's oh. a run for Washington. Man, that was so close to being a run on the board for Washington. I think you gotta stay in and just wear that one. <laughs> the 2-2 two -two to Husky. Just got a piece. You see JT D'Amico coming down. I wonder if he was calling for maybe a catcher's interference call on that. Yeah. That's a foul tip and the ball goes off the glove. You wonder. Let's see. Hard to tell there, but it doesn't seem like it. It just yeah. seemed like a foul tip. Yeah. Another 2 2. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Thirty three straight scoreless innings against Washington by Garcia. A chance to win it for UCLA. Yes. Taryn Alvello came in for relief, struck out a pair with the winning run on base in the seventh. You saw her lips. Let's go win this ball game. She is all that stands between UCLA and a championship series appearance. Bottom of the eighth inning, still scoreless in extra innings in OKC on this semifinal Sunday. It'll be 9-1 and 2 for UCLA due up. Gooden, then Nichols and Perez. And then you've got Jordan and Garcia looming for UCLA. A very difficult part of the order. Alvella will face Gooden to lead things off. 0 for 2. Nichols on deck. He's got a double today. 
Corners are in against the speedy Kelly Gooden. And she takes a strike at 69. It's been consistently 69 to 71 for Alvelo. At the top of the velocity charts, right around 71, 72, 73, you're inching towards the very top of this sport. And on the corner. reminder here that UCLA has not gotten a hit since the bottom of the third inning when Bubba Nichols hit a double. They haven't had a base runner since Jordan walked two batters later. Or had a base runner in Taylor Pack. That's it. At the start of that seventh inning, only the two base runners on walks. To third, Espinosa, good play, one down. Taryn Alvello called that March 17th outing where she wore 15 runs and 154 pitches, and Heather Tarr left her out there. Message sent. Alvello's been dynamite since. And here she faces Bubba Nichols, the second most productive player in the NCAA tournament in terms of driving in runs. And she drives one into center field. The winning run is aboard for the Bruins in the eighth. If Bubba scores, the Bruins win. And they're headed to the finals. Alvelo will face Perez. Wanted foul. Nothing in one. Love to maybe execute here. You still have another strike to play with with Jordan on deck. 0 Oklahoma and Alabama still to come <laughs> if you thought the drama was going to be done. <laughs> the Sooners only need to win once. Alabama needs to win twice. Got the corner, nothing in two. 71. Alabama's had to wait a lot. It feels like between <laughs> yesterday and today. They're just yes, playing the wait game. Yeah, they ended up starting their game about four and a half hours after they were originally scheduled to. Late night last night <laughs> as Montana Fouts lit it up in the circle against Arizona. Perez rips it foul. Yeah, Taryn Alvello needs to be careful with where she's placing these 71 mile an hour pitches because Bubba Nichols has been on time and that's a pretty good swing by Bree Perez seeing her pitch that's over the middle of the plate. Just got a piece. And that too, she has to be careful. Even though you throw 71, 72, you still have to find a spot, the spot, the perfect place that you want to put this pitch to get this hitter out. And it's not going to be over the heart of the plate when you see a hitter timed up with you like that. That's better. Yep, try to go further off the plate on 0 and 2. In the air to left. Reynolds into foul territory and ran out of room. Nice catch made by the fan down the left field line. And still one and two. If you just give these Washington defenders a chance to make a play, they're going <laughs> yeah, to be gonna there. They're going to try it. They're, they're going to have your back. You just know it. All out, all the time, always expecting the ball. Every single person on that field right now wants a chance to make a play. And you have to be ready for it in this moment Especially with the winning run on base. Especially in this moment. Nichols, the winning run. Into left field, down for a base hit. Nichols stops at second. And the Bruins have the winning run in scoring position with only one out. 
I mean, Brie Perez was just on time in this entire bat. She just wanted something close. And it, again, it's over the middle of the plate. You, she established early on, Brie Perez did, that you couldn't blow it by her. It needed to be better placed on the inner half, the outer half, or even try a rise ball up in the zone to see if she would chase a pitch. But one, two count. It's a single for Perez and now a rally for UCLA. First runner in scoring position since, as Amanda mentioned, that Bubba Nichols double in the third inning. And here is Aliyah Jordan. Coming off Tommy John surgery this season. A chance to win it. Didn't play in the field for most of this season because she couldn't throw. She was still rehabbing from that Tommy John surgery, but once she was able to swing the bat, she was right back in the lineup. A 1 0. Big cut. 1 and 1. The 10 year anniversary of their lone title. Washington trying to make it back to back appearances in the Champ Series. UCLA trying to get back for the first time in nine years. A 1 1. On the corner for a strike. 1 and 2. In the air, left center field, Reynolds and Malloy over. Reynolds makes the catch, and Nichols will stay at second base. Two down here in the eighth inning, and here we go. Taryn Alvello, the All-American, against the two-time USA Softball Collegiate Player of the Year with the winning run 120 feet away. Garcia had the two run home run in extra innings to give UCLA the lead against Alvelo. Against Plain, beg your pardon. Now facing Alvelo, who she's homered off of this year. Ball one. Garcia hit one of the two home runs in that 15 run pounding of Alvelo back in mid March. I'm glad Morgan Flores just is taking a second yeah. to go out and talk to Taryn Alvello. I, I was actually wanting it to happen last at bat going up against Aaliyah Jordan because of just her missing her spots and being a little bit wild and then missing some over the plate. Good time for a regroup. Hey, remember, this is what works best for you. Remember, this is when you are your best, when you do this, this, and this. Let's go. Let's stay in it. Taryn Alvello has talked about every pitch taking a breath and getting in to a very specific mode. A big 1-0 pitch here. Late on the swing, and it's 1-1. One and one. Two balls and a strike. Winning run at second, two down, eighth inning. The pitch fouled away, and it's two balls and two strikes on Garcia. That was a better spot right there. Mm -hmm. Up and in her hands, jammed her. I'd go back up and into that rise ball that she started her off with earlier in this count. See if you can get her to chase that pitch. Two two delivery. Ooh, goes with the curve, low and away. Three balls and two strikes.
And Flores back out to chat with Alvelo one more time. Taryn Alvelo has been through the ringer. She's been in the championship series in her career, but this might be as stressful as any moment in her life. She settles back in, as does Garcia. Winning run at second and Nichols. Three balls, two strikes, two outs, eighth inning. To left, Reynolds got the catch! And we're headed to the ninth! Look at that smile on Alvelo's face. Sammy Reynolds just extended Taryn Alvelo's career. Would have been the game winner, but she goes up and reaches for it and a catch that makes you have goosebumps. And Taryn Alvelo, so thankful, jumping up and down. I get to play another inning wearing this uniform with this team. Let's go win a ball game. A bullet off the bat of Rachel Garcia towards left. And how about the freshman coming up clutch on defense for her senior pitcher, Sammy Reynolds, getting it done. And she didn't get a great read, but she was able to make up for it and just pure determination to go up and catch that ball. I love the emotion. Like I said before, Adam, give these Washington defenders a chance to make a play, and they will come through for you. And Taryn Alvello saying right here, right now, again, let's go win a ball game. Let's go. Five stranded in the last two innings by UCLA against Alvelo. Reynolds has earned the squeeze snack right there. <laughs> what a play. And now Garcia, after that big emotional roller coaster, goes back into the circle to face eight, nine, and one in the Washington order, starting with Silent Rain Espinosa. Top half of the ninth inning. <laughs> Take a breath. One and one on Espinoza, who was robbed by a left fielder in this game. Good play by Kelly Gooden in foul territory a couple of innings ago. Espinoza walked in the seventh, but was left stranded. It's 150th pitch now that Rachel Garcia has thrown, and I haven't kept my eye the entire game on the bullpen, but it seems like there's been little to no action in the UCLA yeah. bullpen. This is a season high in pitches for Rachel Garcia, 151. But she's been in there for longer than that in her career. She's had 200 plus pitch outings before, which is nuts to think. Gets the strikeout on Espinoza. That's number 12, 13, beg your pardon, now on the day. Back-to-back -back Ks for Garcia. Well, she has to feel a little bit of energy, too, with the way that UCLA swung the bat in the last half inning, thinking, all right, my team's getting on time. I felt good about my swing. We had a couple of hits in that inning. That in itself can give a pitcher a little bit more energy here at the end of the game. Here is Amira Malloy. Foul tipped it. She has fanned twice today. Garcia with 13 strikeouts in this game, as many as she had in her first two starts combined at the World Series this weekend. Just missed. One and two. Another strikeout for Garcia, number 14. She's so tough, Tiff. 
Yeah, she's really been preparing for this since the offseason. She said she felt a little hesitant in last year's Women's College World Series with throwing her pitches, but she says she feels so much more confident in the here and now and the turnaround from thinking you have the game winner to come back in the circle and then sh face against a very Washington, tough Washington lineup. Like Amanda, how tough is that as a former two-way player to come right back in the circle and do that? There's so many emotions in this game. Bates flares one to right, and that will drop in front of Jordan for a base hit. A game like this just toys with your emotions, Adam. For not just <laughs> Rachel Garcia, but all of these players, the ups and the downs. Man. Bates is aboard the go-ahead run for Washington. And here comes the power threat in the Husky lineup. Morgan Flores with 23 bombs this year. She just missed a go-ahead home run in her last trip in the eighth. And she takes high for ball one. ahead 2 and 0 oh. and the nine career postseason home runs is tied for the most in Washington history one of the great home run hitters in the program at over 70 in her career Jamie Clark nine of them came in the postseason Flores hasn't had that type of power throughout her career but this year has been the big season coming back from the ACL injury did not get to play in the championship series or at the World Series at all last year. Said when the game's taken away from you, you learn to appreciate it that much more. Ahead of the count, 2-0. Oh. Big cut, my <laughs> goodness! She was trying to take the lead on one swing again. Wow, this is a big swing. <laughs> that might have been the biggest swing I've seen all weekend. One hundred and sixty one pitches now from Garcia and she's behind Flores three balls and a strike. Comes back with a strike Paige Halstead with a fist pump as that one came zipping in at 70. Payoff pitch to Flores. She takes ball four, and Sis Bates moves into scoring position as the go ahead run. Still two down in the ninth inning, and Sammy Reynolds is going to have another chance for a signature moment at the World Series in her debut. Well, and she's been seeing the ball well off of Garcia. Had three hits against her in this game already. One to center, one to right, one on the infield off the glove of a defender. And Lisa Fernandez is going to come out and have a chat with Garcia. Imagine to go over just what you talked about. Hey, this girl has seen you really well over the course of the day. This was just in the last half inning. A winning run at second base for UCLA. If that touches the ground, the Bruins are headed to the championship series. Instead, Reynolds recovering to make a fantastic play. <laughs> you all right? You like that one? Go back to that play again. It's a now, goosebump moment. But you know what Rachel Garcia's thinking in the circle? Like, hey, you just robbed me. I want to get That's you right. out. That was against Garcia, who yes. was at the plate. <laughs> Fourth Washington freshman in the last 15 years with 40-plus driven in. Yeah, that's good company when Ali Aguilar's name is on that list for the U.S. national team. Just, Reynolds takes high. I don't think that she's going to get much close with the way that she's been swinging the bat against Garcia. Three hits on the day, and then Kaya Gibson, who's on deck, 0 for 3 with two strikeouts. 
rather face her. Two balls and no strikes. Got the corner. Two balls and a strike. Missed outside. You said it'd been very careful with Reynolds. Gibson is on deck. Well, she did walk her last time up. She's just four for 26 in the NCAA tournament. You see JT D'Amico talking with her in the on-deck circle. Lisa Fernandez, the legend, calling the pitches. The 3-1. Back to that outside corner, and it's 3-2. and two. I would throw it in that exact same spot again. I mean, that precise spot. And it's been a good spot for her all day. The 13 strikeouts. 3-2. Got her swinging again. The Bruins with a chance to win it as Garcia keeps doing it in the circle. That backdoor curveball has been nasty against left-handed hitters. She went to it for the second strike of the at-bat, and then she finished her off with that same pitch, getting her to chase it. That would have been ball four. Emotions, passion, and high, high drama on a game that started at high noon here in Oklahoma. It's been a classic pitcher's duel at the Women's College World Series presented by Capital One. Scoreless game, bottom nine. UCLA needs a run to head to its first title series in nine years. We still have Oklahoma and Alabama to come. The Bruins and the Sooners need to win once to advance to the champ series. The Huskies and Tide need two. And Taryn Alvelo, since coming in in the seventh inning with the winning run on base, has been flame throwing. Here's Taylor Pack. Fisted towards first, caught by Gibson. One pitch, one down in the bottom of the ninth. I'm hoping that in that last half inning, Taryn Alvelo had a chance to just kind of regroup. In the first inning, when she came in for relief of Gabby Plain, she had a couple of strikeouts and then another quick gout. But then that eighth inning, UCLA really started to time her up and see the ball well off of her. She'll face Malia Quarles, the first batter she faced when she came in in the seventh. She struck her out. Ball one. Quarles getting her first career Women's College World Series start today. And the go-ahead home run on Friday against Arizona in a winner's bracket game, but is fanned three times between Plain and Alvelo swinging. Big swing, one and one. And you can understand why Taryn Alvelo might be pitching a little bit tighter because every pitch that she throws right now has the potential to be the last pitch that she ever throws wearing a Washington uniform. All the pressure is on her. If she gives up a home run, she's done. And Quarles has that ability. A 1-1. One, one. Inside. Cheers on from the bench. Two and two. Another tar found Taryn Alvello out of Carroll, Ohio. And that was senior.
Another strikeout of Quarles. Two down here in the bottom of the ninth inning. I think strikeouts kind of give Taryn Alvelo some extra juice, some extra energy. She lives for those, those strikeouts. Rise ball up in the zone, starts about bell tie, works its way up. Goes right at Quarles, who struck out now four times today. Taryn Alvelo now second all time in strikeouts at Washington. Here's Brianna Tautalafua, who is 0 for 3 today. 0 for 19 in the NCAA tournament. And it can all change. Everything can be forgiven. Every slump forgotten with one swing. Just missed outside, 2-0. Again, you talked about this earlier. Morgan Flores, very tight with Taryn Alvelo. They talked to us about their great relationship and how much they lean on one another. Just to go out and settle her down. Nobody knows Alvelo as well as Flores does when she's operating in the circle. The 2-0. And hack it away on a high pitch, two and one. And this is a hitter. You can't let her get on base. Yeah. Tautu Lafua this season. Batting 181 coming into this game. 0 for 3 today. I'm behind in the count 3 and 1 here. Yep. I think that goes back to what you said. Every pitch could be the last for Alvella. Check swing. No swing. The winning run is aboard for the Bruins here in the ninth. A great at bat by Tato Lafua. Yeah. Go up, take some pitches, make Alvella work. I mean, you're not seeing the ball real well in terms of getting a ton of base hits and find a way to get on base any way you can. And she'll be pulled for Stevie Wiz. Will come in as a pinch runner. And the story of Wiz and the heart procedure that she is going to have eight days after graduating. She's scheduled to graduate in 11 days. And then on June the 21st, she'll have a third open heart surgery. Wayne Drays, who wrote that great feature on her on ESPNW. He is here today, as a matter of fact, following up with Stevie a little bit, too. A wonderful feature and a wonderful story. She got to score a run at the World Series on Friday night. A great moment. So she will pinch run for Tauta Lafua. She is the winning run for UCLA to try to send him to the World Series Finals. And it's Kinsley Washington to the plate for the Bruins in the eighth spot. Nothing in one. And Gabby Plain had been warming up. Last inning, she ran in before Taryn Alvelo threw the first pitch of this half inning. You know, Washington just going to do whatever it takes, pay close attention to how Alvelo is throwing and not wanting to make any mistakes here in this critical game. Facing her for the first time, she was pinch hit for in the seventh. One and one. And she's not thrown as hard today. That pitch right there was 68, throwing 69. I mean, yesterday she was against Oklahoma State. She was touching 72, 73. And she lives on adrenaline, this pitcher. When Alvelo's amped up, you get a little extra on those deliveries. A ball and a strike. One and two. Alvelo has left three stranded in relief so far into her third inning of work after 16 strikeouts against Oklahoma State to win last night after a save against Minnesota yesterday to extend Washington's season. The one two. Check swing roller foul. 
Good job just to protect by Washington. One and two. Two and two. And you think about it, major props to Rachel Garcia, who's thrown every single pitch of this game for UCLA. Meanwhile, Washington split the duties with Gabby playing, getting the start, and then Alvello coming in. But Gabby, Garcia has just been so strong in this game. Of course, not giving up any runs. Just battled. This has been a battle. What a game. Nothing, nothing. Still in the ninth. Just about every game has felt like this at one point or another this weekend. Means a lot of different things to a lot of different people depending on what colors you're wearing. The 2-2. Got her. The 300th strikeout for the season for Taryn Alvello. And it extends the Huskies season. Still scoreless as we go to the top of the 10th in the semifinals at the Women's College World Series. 169 tosses for Garcia today. She'll go to work against the middle of the Washington order in Gibson, Atley, and Helm. Gibson walked back in the eighth. She was left stranded with the bases loaded. In the last six innings, 11 left on base by the Washington Huskies. They've stranded 12 today. If Washington loses this game and gets eliminated, that might be the number that sticks out to Heather Tarr the most. The number of runners left on base over the course of the weekend here. It's 36 so far. But all it takes is one now. Tenth inning. One and two. You said all you need is one. Watch Taryn Alvello. Let's just get one. Push one, that's it. That's all we need, push one. One, two on Gibson. And that was one of the keys coming out of the game for Washington was to be able to come across with that timely hit. You have two pitchers, two All-Americans on your staff who are gonna keep you in the game, especially with the Washington defense. But it's been about being able to get as many timely hits as they would like here at the World Series yet still be in the position that they are in the semifinal. Out in front of the change up there and just got a piece to fight it off. On the ground to second. Kinsley Washington flips over to first. One down in the 10th. We haven't seen a whole lot of mistakes in this game between the three hurlers we've seen. Here's Taryn Atley. Little pop. Tauta Lafua makes the catch, crashing into the dugout. Two down. And Tauta Lafua has made a couple of spectacular defensive plays in this game. When she's gotten the opportunity, she's made the most of it. This ball was in the air. She got a good read. Her teammates clear the way to be able for her to go up against the fence and stick with this one as she runs into that fence and holds on to it. 
That's a huge second out. And that'll bring up Emma Helm, who walked back in the eighth. Take strike one. Throwing 52. More, yeah, she's throwing more change-ups in this inning from the get-go when she faced Kaya Gibson, threw her a couple, then now to Emma Helm, really being able to mix in this inning. Helm doubled back in the fifth. She was left stranded then. One of the rare extra base hits we've seen in this game between the 13 combined. Another strikeout for Garcia. And she continues to keep Washington at bay. 9-1 and 2 coming up for the Bruins. Brianna Tautalafua getting it done with the glove. The defense and pitching has been sparkling. The Sooners patiently waiting for their chance to head to the championship series once again. They'll take on Alabama coming up next. Beth Mowens, Michelle Smith, Holly Rowe will all be here for the call. They're patiently awaiting as well, experiencing all this drama with us. Nothing, nothing, and a chance for Kelly Enoy Perez's team to get back to the championship series. 11 titles, the most in program history, long considered to be the best program in the country. Hasn't been to the champ series in nine years. While the Huskies were denied by Florida State a season ago, they try to make it back to the champ series on the 10 year anniversary of their only title. Adam Amin, two-time All-American Amanda Scarborough, Tiffany Green, the wonderful women and men of our very large crew here in Oklahoma City that's been enjoying this whole weekend along with every fan that's filled a seat. A run sends the Bruins to the Champ Series. 9-1 and 2, starting with Kelly Gooden, who's 0 for 3 today facing Taryn Alvello. Into her fourth inning of relief work. Got the save against Minnesota yesterday. And then got the win against Oklahoma State last night with 16 Ks. She's now hit 300 strikeouts for the season. Chen Speedy Hachi and our own Danielle Laurie. That's it. Bouncer to third. Past Espinoza. Beats the first. Not in time. Good and legs it out. And the winning run is aboard for UCLA in the 10th. When this hit got past Espinosa, it was all Kelly Gooden and her speed. The minute that it went past the third baseman, Silent Rain and two Sis Bates, you knew that Kelly Gooden was going to get down there safely with her wheels. And here's Bubba Nichols, one of the great hitters in UCLA history with a chance to win it. And will we see a change here? Indeed we will. And Taryn Alvello giving the ball right back to Gabby Plain. Fired up. She's responsible for the winning run. She's saved plain already in this tournament. She helped save it today and now has to give the ball back to the sophomore. Plain, who started this game and saw six plus innings of rock solid work, was pulled when she walked Taylor Pack to start the seventh. The winning run was aboard. Plain had retired 10 Bruins in a row before that walk. And now she re enters. Alvello is done. She cannot re enter the game in the circle and now it's up to Gabby Plain. She put together a strong performance in six plus and they look so different. Gabby Plain likes to spin the ball 61 62 miles an hour major movement mixes in a lot of different pitches. She'll go up in the zone with her rise ball. She'll also mix in a curve ball on both sides of the plate and then loves her drop ball too. A sophomore from Australia, 
right back to work. Zeros across the board. Garcia with 10 shutout innings and nearly 180 tosses. Plain and Alvelo with nine shutout frames combined. Both teams have left a lot of runners on base. Seven by UCLA, 12 by Washington. And Plain, who's been so clutch on this, the biggest stage. It's up to her to extend Washington's season. Nichols doubled off of Plain in the third. Struck out against her back in the first, flew out in the fifth. The winning run is good in at first. Ball one upstairs. Her first pitch in what has to be over an hour. On the field, at least. Obviously, she was getting some work in. Yeah, this game is now in about three and a half hours long. In there for a strike. One and one. Nichols shows bunt, tries to put it down and fouls it. It's been so tough to try to execute bunts in this World Series because of all the great spin pitchers we have. I think I would have let just Bubba Nichols keep swinging it. She's one of your best hitters on the team. I know you want to move a runner into scoring position, but Bubba Nichols, I want her to swing away. Three home runs in the NCAA tournament, including one here. The one, two. Drive to left, but foul. Out in front. And the good thing for UCLA, too, is that they have one of the fastest players in the country at first base. Anything in the gap, you know that Kelly Gooden will be thinking not just two bases, but scoring. Outfield playing deep against Nichols. The one, two. Down the left field line and hook foul. Out in front of a couple. Nichols the tone setter back at the top of the UCLA order. One, two. Two balls and two strikes. We have not seen teams on this half of the bracket be overly aggressive on the base paths. Gooden's got great speed. Flores has not thrown a runner out all season from behind the plate this year. Two, two. Towards short, Sis Bates ready, backing up. One down. This was such a big pitch by Gabby Plain to be able to take a little bit off of her curveball and get Bubba Nichols off time. Within that bat, those foul balls, she was on time. She spins a curveball in the outside corner and she hits it off the end of her bat for a nice, easy pop fly to Sis Bates. Now it's Brianna Perez. Went 0 for 3 against Plain. A single against Alvelo in the eighth. Perez, a sophomore this year. Oh, 
Bouncer to second. Atlee's got it. Flip to Bates, and they'll get the lead runner. On the force at second, two down. Perez on the fielder's choice is at first, and that'll bring up Aaliyah Jordan. And you kind of exchange speed for speed, but yep. still Bree Perez not as fast as Kelly Gooden. Still fast, but Gooden is really fast. It is another good base dealer at first in Perez if Kelly Enoy Perez wanted to get aggressive. Jordan at the plate. Take strike one. And you know, Washington's defense just continues to make plays. Yeah. I mean, no errors, and we're they're in their fourth game here. They've only committed three errors in the entire postseason. One of the better defensive teams in the country the last few years. And UCLA's done well here, too. Just two errors, both by the same person in Tata Lafua. Play good defense as well. One one. On the outside corner one and two. A chance for Plain to leave the winning run stranded. Perez the winning run for UCLA. One ball and two strikes on Jordan. Two and two. Rachel Garcia is on deck. If Jordan reaches. She was robbed by Reynolds in her last trip. Two two delivery. Back up the middle into center field. Base hit. And the winning run in Perez is in scoring position. And Rachel Garcia will come up once again in the same spot. First and second, two out, and a chance to send the Bruins to the championship series. Oh for four today. She has stranded five on base, but she's been robbed of hits twice with great defense by Atley in second and then Reynolds in left. Garcia pops it up foul. This was back in the eighth inning. Winning run at second, Garcia up. A sweet swing, trying to find a gap in left center field, and the freshman Sammy Reynolds went up and robbed her of the game-winning hit. And that, that catch is why we are still here <laughs> right now. Absolutely. What a play. Nothing and one. One and one. And Rachel Garcia doesn't have the best batting average on the UCLA team, the most RBIs, the best slugging percentage, but just seems like she has some of the most clutch hits for this team in the biggest moments. One here could send the Bruins to the championship series. Bouncing ball to third. Espinosa tags the bag, and the inning will stay alive. It is a foul ball. <laughs> Faked us all out there. <laughs> it was Mike Bartling on top of the call. <laughs> it was a close ground ball to third base. Silent Rain Espinosa playing back behind the bag. She catches it on the foul side. Yep. And it did cross the bag on the foul side, too. All about where she was positioned. She would have been playing a little bit more up, would have been close. One and two on Garcia. Foul ball, foul ball. In the air to left, Rachel Garcia with the biggest swing of her life. 
and she walks the Bruins into the championship for the first time in nine years. One swing, an emotional roller coaster. And the winningest team in Women's College World Series history finally has a chance to reclaim the crowd because of this swing by Rachel Garcia. On a changeup, Gabby playing ahead in the count, and Garcia gets a pitch that's up that she can handle, and everybody knows it off her bat, and they already celebrate. Rachel Garcia said, not on my watch. We're not going to the 11. We're going to the Champ Series. And the career of Taryn Alvello with that one swing has come to a close. And the UCLA Bruins are back in the finals for the first time since 2010. An incredible 10 inning, 3 nothing UCLA win. An amazing game between these two teams. And we have a finalist. UCLA, the two seed, 11 time champion, seeking its first title in nearly a decade. We'll get ready for the winner of Oklahoma and Alabama. What a game, and the player of the year delivered as such. Tiffany Green, she's with Rachel Garcia. O-M-G. <laughs> How would you describe what you're feeling right now, Rachel? So much right now, so much emotion. I mean, the second it came off my bat, I think I just had a tear start going, but um, just the emotion and support that this whole team has just given me this whole entire game, I can't thank them enough. I mean, Paige behind the back just hyping me up and uh, Coach Lisa Fernandez just absolutely after every single inning telling me I've got this. So just being able to hear those words and being able to just withstand, like keep going and just keep doing what I was doing. I mean, I couldn't do it without everyone. So just mixed feelings right now <laughs> all over the place. This was an old school pitchers duel back and forth, a fantastic game. Where did you have to dig to come up in those late innings to make those big pitches? I mean, it started from the beginning. I knew it was going to be a pitchers duel. I mean, Gabby Plain and Taryn Alvelo, just such great pitchers. I mean, being able to face them in pack was just, I mean, they're just outstanding pitchers, but just being able to have my team and them have my back in every situation that was put out there just really helped me get through all of this. How does it feel knowing that you helped will your team back to the champ series for the first time in nine years? I want to cry, to be honest. Um, I, feel, I feel like we've just been working for this moment since day one, and to see where we've taken this team is just incredible, and I, I can't wait to get after it tomorrow in these next few days. So, You told us that you dedicated this season to your papa. If he was here with you, what would he tell you in this moment? He would just smile at me. That's all. He didn't have to say anything to me. I just, just looking into those deep blue eyes and seeing a smile. That's all I needed. Congratulations to you. you. No surprise. Our Capital One rewarding performance. 179 pitches, no runs allowed, and the biggest swing of her life. This is why she's a national player of the year. She wants a ball in her hand in the circle. She wants a bat in her hands up at the plate. She's an athlete that can do it all, and she just sent her team the champ series. Garcia, the hero for UCLA in a four hour and 17 minute, 10 inning thriller. Oklahoma and Alabama still to come. What a career for Taryn Alvello, and what a season for Washington. But it's this swing that sends the Bruins to the championship series. For Tiffany Green, Amanda Scarborough, the wonderful women and men of our crew, 
An absolute privilege to be here. Adam Amin saying so long. Here's Molly McGrath and company.